What did your roommate from hell do to earn their title? He would always leave his dog for too long, and she would poop on the floor. It was an old dog and I'm sure at one point it wasn't an issue. The problem was this guy didn't even try to do anything to fix the issue. I'd get home from work every day and walk into a house that punched me in the face with poop smell. When I opened the door, we talked to him about it over and over again, and he'd just blow it off. What did he finally do when he got fed up with us complaining? He put the dog down. We just wanted him to maybe come walk her while on break at work. His job was 5 minutes down the road. I can still feel the tension in the room when we found out she was gone. Not super terrible, but we went to a party. He got drunk super quick and saw some people he didn't want to be around and walked home. About an hour later me and my other room had headed home too. When we pulled into the driveway we saw lights on in the living room, which quickly went off. When we got inside we saw a massive person sized hole in the hallway wall into the bathroom. Our roommate was pretending to sleep, and when we asked him what happened he said someone broke. In didn't try to steal anything but just busted a hole in our wall. From inside of the bathroom into the hole I should add, then slipped out the still locked back door. They didn't see him laying on the couch at all either apparently. This dude was a compulsive liar. My favorite lie was that he had his whole head tattooed to look like a skull, but it faded so no one can tell anymore. She stole my underwear, wore them, then reported me to our boarding school for having personal inappropriate underwear. When I confronted her for stealing them, she got in trouble for theft, but I still got in trouble for having clothes outside the dress code, even though I threw them out after I saw them in her dirty laundry hamper. I had gotten a friend of mine from college one of my best friends at the time a job at my company that would get him out of Arizona and a really toxic family life. He moved into my apartment in DC for a month or two with my girlfriend and me while he saved some cash after moving. The first night he stole her anxiety medication to go to sleep like 8 of them and then it turned out he'd developed a massive drinking problem that he kept moderately hidden until I noticed the smell of booze on his breath in the morning car to work. He also passed out at the office at least once. Eventually, he became completely non-functioning. He stole booze, money, pills, and started locking himself in his room and just never interacting with anyone. Eventually, as it had been 3 months and he never paid rent, I had to kick him out. He was fired the next day, and ended up wasting all the money he'd saved on booze, and then wound up in a shelter for a bit. He then took a bus to Seattle, and lived on someone's couch for 2 years. We finally mended our friendship last year it had been about 8, and then he fell back into booze and illegal substances, and I had to drive 2 hours to where he lives in northern Arizona, to take him to rehab. After dropping him off at rehab, I watched him take a phone call and then leave without going inside. He is early 30s, and has an enlarged liver and heart issues from all the abuse, and so I'm pretty much under the assumption he's going to die, and there's not much more I can do. I once had a roommate who kept cranking the temperature way up, I'm talking like 28 degrees celsius or 85 fahrenheit. The landlord kept coming over to turn it way down as he was paying the bill. This meant we had the landlord coming over basically every day for a month. Finally he turned the temperature to a very generous 20 to celsius set up a lockbox to cover the thermostat. My roommate came home, got wasted, took a hammer and smashed the box to pieces, and turned the temperature up to 28 degrees again. This by itself was just mainly amusing, but he he also was stealing my stuff, borrowing money without paying it back, and hosting late night dance parties to Nelly Furtado music. He claimed he had never used a vacuum in his life, and didn't know how. One time he put a frozen pizza in the oven together with the cardboard. I smelled burning, and raced downstairs to remove smoldering paper from the oven, before it caught fire, and burnt our house down. I asked him what he was thinking, and he said that's the way we do it in Spain. No shame. No apology. He was dealing illegal substances out of our place, started to cook something, and passed out starting a fire didn't pay his share of the rent, brought a Kalaknikov into the place, dude knew nothing about guns or gun safety, stole money, a playstation, an item slash food slash clothing slash money though it took a while to prove it, tried to convince all of us to do illegal substances with him, left use needles around, one of the roommates was a former heroin addict, and he leaned hard on him to try to get him to do substances again failed. A couple of us managed to break the lease and GTFO. 
he broke into all of our cars in retribution, and threatened us, and stalked us, after we moved to a new place, he wound up in prison for a year, and when he got out started a fight, that ended very badly for him with him in intensive care in a hospital and that was the last I heard of him. He was technically my boyfriend, but he was staying with me, so he was also my roommate, anyway, caught him cheating, and promptly kicked him out, since he didn't have key to the apartment, I left my place unlocked, while I was at work, so that he could get his stuff out, which, he didn't do, I ended up dropping his stuff off at his mom's house, what he did do instead was steal my pet snake, I don't know what he did to him, like if he just let him go outside, if he took him with him, I know he's not in my apartment, it's really not that big of a place and I tore it up every single day for nearly a month straight trying to find him, he had escaped once before when his old enclosure broke, but I found him within a few hours, the enclosure I had for him after that incident was escape proof, and there's absolutely no trace of him anywhere, I have two cats, both of which would have tore him to pieces, had they had the chance, but again, there's no sign of anything, he was just gone. The thing is, I didn't notice until a few days after the fact. If you know snakes, they spend a lot of time hiding. So, during those few days between me kicking him out and me realizing he was gone, I figure my snake was curled up inside his little cave. But then feeding day came, and I flipped up the cave, and saw he wasn't there. Frantically searched the whole enclosure, and he was nowhere. So yeah, he did something to my snake. One of my first flatmates in London was weirdly into me. One time I took a friend home cause she was too drunk to take the tube by herself. My flatmate saw us getting home, asked me if she was my girlfriend, and I said yes hoping he'd leave me alone after this. Big mistake. He asked if he could sleep with us in my bed. My friend was passed out at this point. Said he wouldn't do anything, just wanted some human contact. Creepy as hell. Moved out shortly after that. After a few months of being constantly behind on rent slash bills, I came home from a work trip to find the place trashed and her gone, along with a bunch of my stuff, white goods, cutlery, etc. A number of years later, her brother confronts me at a pub and throws me up against a wall, accusing me of abusing her, which I very much did not do. Turns out her boyfriend, now husband, had been touching her up. She showed up at a family dinner with a black eye, and instead of telling the truth about her boyfriend, she told her family that it was me. I eventually sorted it out with a brother after a mutual friend calmed him down. We had a few drinks and sorted out the story. After showing up with the black eye, the brother and a bunch of his mates showed up and moved all her stuff out. Being unable to find me to get revenge on, they decided to steal a bunch of my stuff and trash the house. He apologized and we left it at that. Fingers crossed the boyfriend copped a hiding over it all later on. Cost me thousands in repairs and unpaid bills. My sophomore year of college, my roommate invited her boyfriend from New Zealand to come live with us. These were dorm rooms, so it's not like she had a private space. This guy was living rent free in our room all the time. He was nice enough, but it was impossible to get anything done, including studying during finals week, when he had nothing else to do, so he just watched TV constantly. When I brought this up to my roommate, and said that I would appreciate it, if he did not stay for the next semester, she got extremely huffy, and moved out. Thankfully they didn't charge me for her half of the room, so I ended up with a single for the cost I had been paying for a double, so I guess it all evened out. There was also the time that she, an art major, decided her final project would be to leave a plate of food in the room and let it rot, and take photos as some sort of a statement on the breakdown of society. Didn't really understand that one, but that didn't help for sure. Not my roommate, but I lived across the hall and my best friend had to share the living space with him. I'll call him Chad. Chad didn't like sharing his room. So he tormented his roommate by inviting Tinder dates over almost every night. Never gave a warning or heads up, blasting loud music 24 over 7, and OFC. Never cleaned up after himself. Once he got the room to himself, he took out one of the desks and slid the two twin-sized beds together to make the back quote megabed. A week later a new roommate is assigned to Chad's room, but Chad wasn't willing to share. Nor did he feel like communicating it with his new roommate. Chad proceeds to leave the room a mess, and vehemently insists 
that the Raz made a mistake, and tried to explain that his room is actually a single unit, and refused to move the desk back in. His room had slept on their living room couch during this time. His room had ended up moving out after Chad made homophobic remarks, saying he didn't feel comfortable sharing a room with someone who might back quote try to come onto me, even after his room had explained, yes I'm gay, but that don't mean I'm attracted to all men, especially you. Toward the end of the semester, Chad asks his other housemates how often should one wash a towel, his housemates asked, and learned that Chad had used only one towel for the entire semester, and never once washed it. The smell alone could melt a rotten egg. They suggested he burn the towel or dispose of it. Chad proceeds to dispose of it in their living room trash can, and due to the toxic odor, propped it up against a window, refusing to bring the towel down the hall to the trash chute. 